Um, over the past four years at COA, I've been really interested in marine food webs. And the more I learned about them, the more I wanted to know the different methods that were used to trace energy flow through the systems. Stable isotope ecology is one of those methods, and it can basically be explained by the concept you are what you eat. Basically, every organism has a stable isotopic signature, which incorporates the food sources that it consumes. So if you know the stable isotopic signature of an organism and what it's consuming, and, or the rate of incorporation, you can determine what it's consuming or where it's eating or when it's eating. So for some background on stable isotopes, they're basically variants, non-radioactive variants of elements. So they're identical in all aspects except their number of neutrons, which give them different weights. The ratios of the different weighted isotopes are what give the signature that I mentioned earlier. When I was first learning about stable isotope analysis, I read a lot of marine mammal studies. And this is because you only need a very small sample of tissue to get a stable isotopic signature. And so whenever an animal breaches or surfaces, you can get a biopsy and have that analyzed and learn all kinds of information about it. But I also read a lot of studies that use stranded deceased individuals as data sources. And until really recently, it was always assumed that death and the decomposition process have no effect on this signature. So um, once you start looking at the process of decomposition, there are actually a lot of opportunities for energy transfer between the tissue and things like bacteria and scavengers and insects. So I originally designed my senior project to test this assumption. And so I got um, tissue samples from a number of individuals that had stranded and were collected by allied whale. And I let them decompose and then measured their signals over time. And as it turns out, there is a significant change in signature in some tissues, but I wasn't able to pinpoint exactly when the change becomes significant. But it, this at least shows that there can be changes and that stranded individuals may not be the best sources of this kind of information. So while I was doing this study, I also developed another project. The lipids in mammal tissue have been shown to unpredictably and significantly affect the stable isotopic signature of tissues. So it's become the industry standard to remove them before analysis. And the most common way of doing this is using a mixture of chloroform and methanol. And it's really effective at dissolving the lipids without damaging other parts of the tissue. But it's also really um, toxic to people who are handling it. It's a carcinogen, and it provides a number of health hazards as well as environmental hazards um, if it enters water sources or the atmosphere. So I originally was looking in the literature for a different method to use. And it turns out that there aren't any right now that are as effective but less toxic. So I designed a study to find one myself. And to do this, I had to understand the molecular interactions between the lipids and the solvents and the other components of the tissue. And I received a grant, which I was able to purchase software with that actually did this for me and looked at a number of different solvents and combinations of solvents. And I came up with a combination of ethyl lactate and cyclohexane, which was a really exciting prospect because Ethyl lactate is a naturally occurring substance, which is in a number of fruits, and it's very low toxicity has led it to be used as a food additive and in things like pharmaceuticals and beverages and fragrances. Um, and it's also biodegradable. So between that and the low toxicity, it was a really attractive option. So to test how effective it was, I took a sample of tissue and split it in half and subjected one to the chloroform mixture and one to the ethyl lactate mixture and then compared their signals after they were analyzed. And from my results, it looks like ethyl lactate is a more effective solvent, but I wasn't able to figure out what all it was dissolving, if it was just dissolving the lipids or if it was affecting another part of the tissue. And so until that's done, I can't really recommend this as an alternative method yet, but it does provide good baseline data for these types of studies. So even though neither of my studies were as conclusive as I would have liked them to be, they both provide really good baseline data, and they've given me really good experience for which to base future studies on if I ever choose to revisit these issues. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone that helped me out with these projects and open it up to questions.